So sun provides us absolutely masses of energy in the form of um, solar radiation. So on Earth we use about uh, 500 uh, exajoules per year at the moment in terms of primary energy. So that's both heat and power and, and electricity. And um, that is about 0.01% of the amount of energy which is received from the sun. So the sun gives us about 4 million exajoules. Um, and of that, obviously not all of it can be harvested, but we estimate that about um, 50,000 exajoules, so about 1% of that, can be harvested. And that is about 100 times more than what we actually use. Well, I started working on solar PV 20 years ago, so I've been watching this. And 20 years ago, uh, it was considered as something which was really not a not a not a realistic um, proposition for power generation. The main research interest in solar cells at that time was for use in space. So in in a, in a context where there was no other energy supply, electricity supply that could be used, and so it didn't matter if you paid a bit extra. And the problem was the cost, the cost of fabricating and processing um, the the solar cells, the uh, uh, crystalline and polycrystalline um, solar cell um, uh, modules. Now what's happened since then is is that the the uh, the technology has developed. Um, but what really has happened is that the market has expanded massively and that has been due to a number of factors but an important factor has been the decisions by a number of countries, for example Germany and Japan were in the lead and Germany has been a strong sort of driver in this, introducing incentives, usually feed-in tariffs, uh, which bring down the cost, which, which, which effectively and make it easier for consumers um, to invest in, in solar photovoltaics. And um, partly as a result of these incentives and also as a result of kind of growing awareness of both uh, energy security needs, so you know, dwindling or, or less secure traditional um, fossil-based energy reserves and a growing awareness of the need for low carbon energy. So those um, uh, three things have contributed to this massive growth. So nowadays we have something like 100 um, gigawatts installed and um, that has grown by, I mean, it, over the last, it, it's grown by a, a factor of 100 over uh, less than 10 years. At the same time as the market expanding, and the costs of the of the panels have come down, um, partly because of improvements in technology. Let's say using less material or finding a cheaper way to process the silicon, but um, largely because of the economies of scale. So a much much larger market means you can make large quantities of solar panels more cheaply, and so now the the costs are uh, almost competitive with other sources of energy. It depends where you're using it. So to summarise, if we want solar PV to fulfil its potential, and we would need, really need to do a number of things. So one is, over the long term, we want the costs of the, of the solar electricity to come down. Not massively, but enough. Um, and that, that, that could be done partly through developments in the solar panel technology by working on alternatives to silicon, which are, uh, which are sort of cheaper, uh, more efficient, and including those as well as silicon in the sort of technology mix. Um, then uh, if we, when we go to large scale penetration, so when you're providing more than 20 or 30 percent of demand from, from solar PV, then we would need some changes in the power um, transmission and uh, infrastructure, so particularly capacity to balance the, the power to, to take to make to um, account for the vari variability 
in solar power supply and ideally storage of electricity on the grid scale. And finally, um, in order to, I mean, the reductions in cost will come along with growth, will, will be assisted by growth in the market. And um, it, there's a need to have a certain degree of enabling um, uh, the take up of solar PV through in incentives um, or regulatory measures uh, where they where they help to make um, to make it easier for users to choose to use PV, and it's important that they should be kind of planned and 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 allow kind of a an sense of confidence to grow amongst the industry and also the the electricity users. Absolutely. <laughs> we could do much, much more. I mean, in the last, what, three years, we've seen uh, capacity grow from something like nothing to four gigawatts peak. Um, and uh, that could grow, you know, to another. That could grow by an order of magnitude without any serious, uh, you know, requ requiring any serious changes to the power distribution network. Uh, maybe to expand on that, I mean, the, 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 you know, the, although the UK is not a sunny place, because there is so much more solar power coming to us from the sun than, than we use, uh, we can still provide a, a, a very significant fraction of our um, electricity use from, from the sun. And that's been demonstrated in Germany, which is approximately as dark and cloudy and wet as the UK is, <laughs> where they've done it all very well. The potential of solar power in developing countries is actually, the whole situation is actually rather different. And um, it, the real importance of, of, of solar power in kind of mit helping to mitigate climate change is to do with what, what you avoid. And um, in developing, so, so it's what, what you avoid, and in developing countries um, where there is, a, in, in many countries, a great, a lot of significant fraction of people not without electricity who want electricity. So there's an appetite for electrical grid connection. And um, these people are then faced with a, or those countries are faced with a, a choice where you could extend the existing grid network where possible and that may be very heavily based on fossil fuels so it would be carbon intensive or to make a decision to go for um, lower carbon technologies and many of those countries also enjoy quite high insulation levels so much sunnier um, than the UK and um, we also have the point that they're the alternative source of power available to them to, to communities which are off-grid would typically be quite expensive. So it might be diesel generators where there's a relatively high cost in, in, in you know, acquiring the fuel and so on. So it can make economic sense uh, to choose uh, solar PV instead of um, we only need small changes in the price of diesel before solar PV becomes really quite attractive. It already is in some areas. It depends on the price of, of diesel, for example. So it, it can make economic sense to choose solar PV, um, and it makes a lot of sense from the point of view of kind of low-carbon development. So the, the big advantage that, that, that those sort of off-grid communities in developing countries may have is that because they're not kind of locked in to an energy infrastructure which is very heavily dependent on fossil fuels on carbon intense sources there's an opportunity to to choose something that avoids that um, all of those issues and uh, and to kind of embrace low carbon 
energy technology that could then enable development, but without giving them the burden of a sort of carbon-intense infrastructure.